masayang mag-aral ng sensya with Sir Alvin Miranda. Whoa, oh, we just go hard, we just go hard, you receive. Good day, learners. Welcome back to my class. For this video, we are going to talk about distance and displacement. For our most essential learning competency, you should be able to describe the motion of an object in terms of distance or displacement, speed or velocity, and acceleration. Are you ready to learn? Let's go! Our universe is full of objects in motion. When you look onto the sky in the morning, you can see moving objects across the sky like birds, airplane, and clouds. Almost everything in our universe is in motion. Kinematics is the study of motion without considering its causes. Kinematics involves describing motion through properties such as position, time, velocity, and acceleration. But how can we say that an object is in motion? Take a look at this example. Is the car in motion? You are right! The car is in motion. But what is your basis in saying that the car is in motion? Correct! The car is in motion because its position is changing. It moves from the house to the park. When an object changes position during a period of time, the object is said to be in motion. To find out if there is a change in position, we use a reference point. Reference point is defined as the starting point or the origin for measuring motion. It is our basis in determining if an object is changing its position. In our previous example, the house is where the car started moving. Thus, the house is the point of reference. The car traveled from the house to its final position which is the park. Therefore, the car is in motion. To define, motion is a continuous change in position with respect to a reference point for a particular time interval. If an object is not changing its position in a given time interval, it is said to be at rest. Now, let us start describing motion by finding out how far did the object travel after it changed its position. There are two ways to find out how far did the object travel. First, by measuring the total length of the path traveled by the object which is called the distance. And second, by measuring the distance between the initial position and final position of the object which is called the displacement. Let us first discuss about distance. Take a look at this example. A dog ran 10 meters to the east, then 5 meters to the south, and another 10 meters to the west. From this example, what is the total length traveled by the dog? To find this, we just need to add the length traveled by the dog from its original position to east, which is 10 meters, plus 5 meters to south, and 10 meters to west. So, the total length traveled by the dog is 25 meters. In short, when we say distance, it is the total length of the entire path that the object or a person traveled in moving from one place to another. Distance is a scalar quantity. A scalar quantity is a quantity that specifies magnitude only. Example is 50 meters, which is a magnitude for distance. 50 is the number and meter is the unit. The standard unit for distance in the international system of unit is meter. This can be represented by small letter m. To get the distance traveled by the object, we need to add all the length of the path covered by the object. It can be represented by the formula 
total distance is equal to D1 plus D2 plus D3 and so on. Wherein D1 is distance 1, D2 is distance 2, and D3 is distance 3. This will depend on the number of paths taken by the object. The value of distance is always positive. Next is displacement. Displacement is the shortest distance between the object's initial position and final position. It is the straight distance from the initial position to the final position. It gives us an idea on how far the object from its starting position and in which direction. Displacement is a vector quantity. Vector quantity is specified by a magnitude and a direction. Example is 50 meters north, which is a value for displacement. 50 meters is the magnitude and north is the direction. Just like distance, the standard unit for displacement is meter. Let's go back to our example earlier. A dog runs 10 meters to the east, then 5 meters to the south, and another 10 meters to the west. We already know that the distance traveled by the dog is 25 meters. Let us now find out its displacement. To find the displacement, we just need to measure the distance between the initial position to its final position. Thus, the displacement of the dog is 5 meters south. This means that the dog is 5 meters away from its starting position to its final position. If we are going to draw a straight line from the initial to the final position, we can see that the direction is going to the south. We can find the displacement mathematically by finding the difference between the final position and initial position of the object. The value of displacement can be positive, negative, or even zero. Take a look at the following illustrations. Take note that the distance is represented by broken line and displacement is represented by a continuous line. Based on the illustrations, how will you differentiate distance and displacement? Correct! Displacement always follows a straight line, while distance does not always follow a straight line. Displacement measures the length of the straight line that connects the object's point of origin to its point of destination, while distance measures the length of the path that the objects travel. Can displacement be equal to distance? Yes, this can happen if the path traveled by the object is a straight line. In this example, the distance is 10 meters, and displacement is 10 meters east. Can displacement be greater than distance? Why? The answer is no. Displacement can be shorter but can never be greater than distance. Remember, displacement is the shortest length from the initial position to its final position. What if the dog in the illustration go back to its starting point? What will be its total distance and what will be its displacement? Its total distance will increase two times or will double, but its displacement will become zero. Why is it zero? It is because the starting position and final position are the same. Thus, we cannot measure the length between them. 
Let us summarize the difference between distance and displacement using this table. 